Welcome to episode four of this podcast. And as we record, it is Monday, the 27th of March. And over this past weekend, I was able to take an extremely meticulous deep dive into the front part of the 50 plus page affidavit. Glad you're with us. I'm Stefan Tubbs, News Talk 710 KNUS. Show runs 4P to 7P Mountain Time, Monday through Friday. And uh, as we speak and as we record this episode four, Dr. Jim Craig is beginning his second full week in the Aurora Detention Facility. What I wanted to really focus on in this episode, the text exchange allegedly between Jim Craig and his now deceased wife, Angela Craig. And if this is just the first perhaps episode that you've tuned in to see, There's a little bit more of a personal connection for me than in other stories that I've covered over more than three decades in my news career. Uh, Dr. Jim Craig was my dentist for years. I did his advertising on a former radio station for years as well. And I did not know her well, but Angela Craig, uh, I'd met her on many occasions and attended at least one or two social events with the Craigs. So I want to get to, again, according to the arrest affidavit put out by the Aurora Police Department a little more than a week ago. And forgive me as uh, with older age, I look down and use my bifocals. But I want to start with a string of texts from Monday, March 6th, just before 7 a.m., the back and forth between Jim Craig and Angela Craig. And it starts with a text from Jim Craig, quote, Thank you so much for making my drink this morning, exclamation point. I just love you. I hope you had a great day. Have a great day. And I'm so glad you're back in town. Angela's response to that. You're welcome, baby. I love you too. I think my body is not letting the caffeine this morning. Uh, I think it was supposed to be liking the caffeine, but texted as letting. Uh, My stomach feels fine, but my head feels funny and dizzy very strange. Jim responds, it's been a week since caffeine for you. Maybe your body is saying, no, thank you. I did a full scoop of caffeine and a big full scoop of the B vitamins. Is that how much you normally take? I'm super shaky. She responds, oh no, I do a small scoop of the B vitamin mix. It really feels weird. Um, It feels really weird. He responds, oops, sorry, baby. The texts go on again from Monday, March 6th. That's okay, it'll wear off. I am dizzy and my eyes won't, don't want to focus, but I can get the stuff done that I need to this morning. He responds, maybe you should lie down. She responds, I'm lying on my face on the mat in my room. You have a bed, you know, he responds. To which she responds, I'm stinky. I think she had just worked out. Uh, Those are my words. Uh, Back to her text, just seems excessive for a little bit uh, extra supplement. So do we read into this that Monday, March 6th, she's starting to feel the effects of him allegedly spiking the protein drink with arsenic. Keep in mind, the arsenic purchased at amazon.com under the name James Craig, purchased and then delivered on March 4th to the Craig home address in Aurora, Colorado. That was on March 4th. These texts are March 6th. So March 4th, the arsenic had been delivered to their home address. Jim Craig says, do you need me to come home? She says, no, this is just weird. I'm dirty in my head and my eyes are working slowly and my body is responding slowly. He responds, that sounds really wrong. I'm going to come home. I don't like this. She says, you can't, you need to work. I'll throw on some clothes and sit with the girls and see if it goes away. At this point, I want to reiterate what I've reiterated many times during every podcast, to be honest with you. It is not lost on me that involved in this pure hell story, six kids, a couple of adult kids. I think one of them literally turned 18, maybe three of the six are considered adults 18 or older, but there's still so many, uh, the three children that are under the age of 18. Uh, And that is important for me to express to you, and I hope you join me in sending prayers their way. Jim Craig then, again on March 6th, texts his wife, who is feeling fuzzy, feeling dizzy. Uh, He responds, okay, 
and I'm just quoting here, I'm probably, I were acting, but I don't like that. I can cancel patients for the morning or move some to Dr. P if needed. So if you change your mind, let me know. Do we have a blood pressure cuff? You should try that and we'll see if your BP is low or something. Did you get lightheaded when you stand up? She says, it's really more like I feel when I take uh, heavy meds and everything adjusts and moves slowly, like I'm moving in, in thick gel. My eyes are struggling to stay focused. So if you believe the arrest affidavit and you follow the evidence, she's feeling the impacts, but of course, untraceable, and wouldn't it be the unthinkable at this point? Dr. Craig, in this text exchange says to his wife, did you take BP as in blood pressure? Uh, I don't know where one is. Okay, if you do end up wanting me to come home, I'll bring a cuff. I have a bottle of magnesium in my second drawer down on the left side of the sink. Take one of those. Have you been eating anything? He texts. She responds, I had my protein shake and magnesium makes me weird. This is not hungry. He texts, are you nauseous? No, I feel drugged, stunning. This is when, and if you followed this story, whether it's Entertainment Tonight or the New York Times for that matter, you have heard this text quote from Dr. Jim Craig to his wife, quote, given our history, I know that must be triggering. Just for the record, I didn't drug you. I am super worried though, you really looked pale before I left, like in your lips even. And then time passes and he asks for an update. Now, if you are following this story closely, uh, the story goes, and according to the arrest affidavit, that Jim Craig was suicidal four, five, six years ago. Within that time frame, he admitted to his wife, Angela, that he had drugged her so he could go in the bathroom and inject himself with something and kill himself. He told her at the time, I drugged you because I, I didn't want you to interfere with my suicide attempt. Again, all of this is lunacy on the surface. It's crazy under the surface, but that's, that's what he's referring to. Then he says to his wife later on Monday, March 6th, I was plugging your symptoms into Google and stroke matches some of what you're describing. Do you have weakness in your whole body or just down one side? And is it both eyes or just one that feel blurry? She responds, it feels like my whole body and it's tingly and my eyes are struggling to focus. He says, are you still laying down? She says, I got in my bed. Okay, good, he responds. To which she responds, quote, my whole body feels so heavy. He responds, something's really wrong. I'm coming home with a blood pressure cuff. If nothing else, I can at least help the girls stay on track while you get rest. Please come get the dogs, is what she responds. Sorry, also, I want to shower, but I'm worried. He responds, okay, I'll help. Then this is fast forward. Again, the, start, the text started just before 7 a.m. on Monday, March 6th. Uh, this string of texts, and there's a lot of time in between, unknown if they talked on the phone or if it was just text. Again, he is at his office, uh, my former dentist's office, uh, at Summerbrook Dental in Aurora on that Monday, March 6th. This picks up just after 6 p.m. on the evening of Monday, March 6th. He says uh, in a text, I'm all done and headed home. How are you feeling? She responds, same. And one of their daughters is making grilled cheese. He says, thanks to the daughter. I'm all done here and headed home now. She responds, I would like another blessing tonight if there's someone who could help. He says, okay, I'm sure we can find someone. That's the end of the text string two days after the delivery of arsenic to the Craig home in Aurora. The next uh, picks up on Tuesday, the following day, Tuesday, March 7th. 
This is just after 6.30 a.m. on Tuesday, March 7th. You don't have to miss work today, uh, Angela Craig texts her husband. We don't have anywhere to go today, and the girls and I will be fine. I'm starting to think I'm just sick, and this is all part of it. I'm going to try my popcorn and Dr. Walker this morning, and we'll see what we can do. He responds, I'm not sure your popcorn will do much, but you're welcome to try it. Uh, she says, PCP, I may just have our daughter take me to urgent care this morning. I think PCP for primary care physician. Uh, Angela Craig texts her husband, I should have had you do that yesterday. The ER is useless. Sorry. He responds, no, you're fine. It did help us rule out a lot of scarier things, so I'm glad that we did it. Now, this would be referencing the first trip to Parker Adventist Hospital. Again, three separate trips to the hospital, two times to Parker Adventist, and she, Angela, would die at University Hospital. The text string from Tuesday morning, March 7th, continues, I'm kind of wondering if maybe I have a sinus infection and I didn't really even notice because I'm so used to them and it turned into an inner ear infection and that's why it felt like it came on all of a sudden. He responds, let's hope with an exclamation point. So how are you feeling compared to yesterday now that you're up and uh, it says loving around, which of course probably was a typo, meant moving around. She texts back, same. He texts back, geez, with an exclamation point. She responds, I'm not sure what you were expecting. I don't think this is a sleep thing. So as a sidebar, you know, you, you, you get this feeling if you follow the affidavit and you follow these text messages, if the allegations are true, he's watching her experience all of these symptoms. And this is now the second day. And she's obviously not doing too well. She's already been to the hospital for a visit or at least um, one time to the ER, says it's useless. And then she considers going to an urgent care type facility. He responds, I don't know either. I was hoping that maybe the worst of it is behind us and you were going to start feeling better over time, I guess. Again, from that, just the first page of this particular page taken out of the affidavit, she's saying in text to her husband, my head feels funny and dizzy. She says she feels very strange. I don't feel right in my head. And maybe the biggest headline is the quote, one simple, three words in one simple text, I feel drugged. The string of texts on Tuesday, March 7th continues, did the ER give you any paperwork yesterday? And she's asking this of, of, uh, of Jim Craig, her husband. Only the discharge paperwork on the island, I believe that's the island in their home, it didn't have any of the blood work results or your MRI interpretation or the CT interpretation or even the glucose numbers. Since you are out and about, I really think you should go over there and see if you can get a copy of it. That's Jim to Angela. She says, they were supposed to give us info on the patient portal. Uh, he says he didn't get any of that. And uh, I'll skip those are really irrelevant to, to how we're looking at this. She ends up saying though, she's having all of this trouble. And she says, I'll take care of it. And that is a theme that runs through. She's still trying to run the household. She's still taking care of the kids, taking care of the dogs. He is going to work. And as we'll talk about probably in our next episode, because there's just so much here, you look at these text exchanges in the first early days of this month, and it is amazing to me personally that you could be married to someone with all of these symptoms that are really, they're unable to diagnose exactly what this is, and to each his or her own when it comes to marriages and how they handle it, but he's consistently at work later on in the process uh, of the, the course of the first two weeks of March. He's at work, and she's struggling immensely with her health and her health is deteriorating and they're just texting back and forth. Now, I will just say that I would, again, to each his or her own, but if this were me in this situation and someone that I cared about, my spouse, a kid, a relative, 
I'm going to be there as much as I can. I would find it hard to be able to go to work. But that's where he was. And that, again, is just, that's just my personal observation. So she ends up saying, I'll take care of it when it comes to the paperwork and, and all of that. And, and then here is, uh, you know, is this one of the first real indicators to Jim Craig, if the allegations are true, that what he's alleged to have been doing, it's starting to work. And she texts him Tuesday morning, March 7th, quote, I didn't want to tell you, but I feel like you would be upset if I don't, but I may have passed out a little bit this morning while standing in the kitchen. I just remember holding on to the island because I was dizzy, and then our daughter um, was in my face saying, Mommy. He says, um, dot, dot, dot. Thank you for telling me, but that would have been a good moment to call 911. She says, I just wanted, uh, I just waited for their daughter. It's weird because my eyes seem to be focusing better today. He says, well, that's good, I guess. She says, I woke up with a headache and spits in my eyes, uh, which I think is a typo for spots. So spots in my eyes. Spots uh, were there with uh, being dizzy and, and a headache. He responds, sorry, baby, that sounds awful. She texts back, I'm aware of both those things. Uh, BS only 97 today. Wow, that's weird, he says, A1C. And then they get into, they get into quite a bit of, of medical information. What's, what about your PCP? What about this level? What about your oxygen level? What about your blood pressure? And then he, in this text, uh, he expresses his, his disappointment in the emergency room, and he also says the following. Uh, he talked, Jim Craig did, to one of his family members who is uh, in the medical field and says to Angela, this sounds to his, the family member, this sounds like diabetes, a diabetic reaction. And she basically says, my doctor can't, uh, my doctor can get me in Thursday or Friday, but not before that. I don't want to be a new diabetic. So I would really uh, rather not say those words. Um, she didn't want to think about herself being uh, a diabetic. And at this point as well, and we'll wrap up this podcast because there's just so much here. We'll have more in our next one. But again, in these back and forth texts, at this point on Tuesday, March 7th, Angela Craig cannot drive. She cannot operate a motor vehicle. Now, I would be lying to you if I, I tried to say because she did have a driver's license. I mean, if my life depended on it, I would not say that Angela Craig had a driver's license because I don't know. But at this point in the texts back and forth, she's basically saying she cannot drive. Now, I think we can be safe in assuming she would be able to drive herself, but she can't see. She cannot focus. And I'll leave you as we close episode four of this podcast. She expresses her frustration and the need or the lack of the ability to be there for her kids. The mother of six. Jim and Angela Craig married 24 years. And she's worried about the kids, she says in another bit of text exchange, quote, my head is killing me. He and she discuss, well, do you want a Z-pack? Is it a sinus infection? And then perhaps I'll leave you with this closing text from Jim, text, uh, from Jim Craig in the text to his wife, quote, I love you. It was so nice hanging out with you and just watching a show and snuggling. I'm sorry, sorry that you're still not feeling well and that you feel like I'm disappointed about that. I'm not disappointed at all. Just feeling empathy for how hard that must be for you. Hopefully things can improve and get better, exclamation point. I am also grateful that the last couple of days have allowed me to have more flexibility in my schedule. And we'll close with this. Quote, God really does know what he's doing. That wraps up this podcast. We'll be back as we record this tomorrow with another episode. 
For producer Mark Crowley, I'm Stephen Tubbs. Thank you so much for tuning in.